Hi. Thanks for coming. It's been a lot of shows. It's been on a lot of shows, but believe it or not, this uh, this is not the only one of these we ever had. We got this one about Jesus three years ago. Three years ago, this got mailed to us from somewhere out of Maryland, east side of the country. I was told, uh, "Here's the one we used to have." I found this in a pawn shop, uh, I don't know, the week before I was going to start doing voyages. And uh, you can tell it's a bit beat up, you know, there's this masking tape along here. Tape all the way around and see if we get the price. 282, you can see the price in some of the earlier shows. And uh, yeah, somebody started watching the show. And uh, he was nice enough to send us this. He said it was a model that he made when he was a kid. He had this for years. And they sent it to us. And, uh, you know, the Internet's funny. You don't really ever know... You, you could spend hours with the person day after day and it never occurs to you to really get to know them. Some people are open books. I'm kind of an open book. Kind of an egotist in that way. I'll just tell you whatever, but some people some people are a little more, you know, closed off, and that's okay. And uh, in the case of uh, Stair Ogre, when I met him, the ogre who sits underneath the stairs uh, he was kind of mysterious. He, uh, I never knew his real name. Oh, I guess I do. We're not going to reveal that, though. Uh, I guess I, yeah, I did, I learned it through mailing some stuff to him. But, you know, we talked for years, and, uh, we connected really well because, you know, this, this whole internet thing, it's a circus. It's a circus. Sometimes it's even a popularity contest. Uh, it's just a bunch of clowns out there a lot of time. And in the case of what we do, uh, you know, video game shows, it's very often not about the games, you know. But Ogre was the kind of guy, he watched for the games. He watched for the games, he waited for the games, he wanted to talk to games, and you know, it wasn't like he was autistic or anything, but that's what he came for. And I, I, for me, I connected, we connected in that way, because that's what I come for. You know, I spent all my time reading about video games, looking at video games, watching video games, playing video games, making shows about video games. And so he sent us that, and inside the, the wood model, he sent us a game. One of the very first communiques he had was, have you ever played the game Summoner, Captain Rass? He said that this was the game that made him love RPGs. It's the first RPG he ever played. And it was interesting to know Ogre, you, 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 you see this with a lot of people, if you do what I do for a long time, you you meet somebody, they're enthused, and eventually they want to stream themselves. And that's really neat. It's neat to see that evolution. And in Ogre's case, his channel was really, really unique. And I, I, I speak in past tense because uh, I, I, I was contacted by... Uh, an old buddy of ours here on the ship, Popo and Duck, and he said, uh, have you heard from Ogre lately? And uh, I remember Ogre had streamed just a, about 
four days prior, maybe even two days prior. Popo says, I don't know, you got a hold of me? He says, he's leaving. So I got a hold of him. I said, what is going on? Where are you going? He says, uh, my channel has already been submitted to be deleted, and it's time for me to go. This is a guy who's been an avid promoter of the Galleon for years, man. And the channel that he had was all about the games. I think I've heard Ogre speak once. And all the time I knew him. And it was never on his own stream. He always typed. He'd always type his responses to you. He asked a question about the game he's playing, he'd type it back. And it wasn't because he was mute, because I know he I know he talked. He was just, you know wasn't the kind of jackass grandstander that so many of us are in this medium. He was a brilliant guy, still is, who just wanted to play some games and share them. Now obviously Ogre has not passed away, okay? This isn't exactly a funeral voyage, but it's a muted one for sure. And uh, while Ogre has moved on, hopefully to bigger and better things, his channel is is now gone. It's been wiped from from Twitch. Um, I believe his YouTube channel may still be up. In fact, I know it is. You can go there if you want to. I don't really know the link at the moment. But um, for all intents and purposes, he's gone. So I thought, um, you know, and I don't do this for everyone. We've had people leave the ship before. had people leave the community before. Uh, Ogre is different, though, man. Because he was, he really, really wasn't worried about the BS. He was here for the games. And if you do what I do for as long as I've done, done it, that stands out. So we're going to be doing a show about Ogre today. We're going to be playing the Summoner for the PlayStation 2. Is this a game I would have picked on my own? No. No, not really. Is there anything particularly special? about it? No. It's pretty run-of-the-mill RPG, I'd say. I think it launched with the PS2. If not, it came out the first year. But, you know, it's it's got some charm. So we'll, we'll we've got an adventure planned. Let's do one more for Ogre. What do you say? Oh. And we'll get to the chest. And we'll get to the bag. And as I said, this whole show is all about Ogre. So we'll get to those when we get to them. Okay? All right. If you still got that Ogre emote, fly it high today. Fly it high one last time. It's uh, the Summoner for the PlayStation 2. Did I say the summoner? Just summoner. Just summoner. Okay. So where we docked today? Um, this is uh, a small island where a monastery is located known as the Iona Monastery. There are monks here. And I decided to just set us down on the island and uh, get us started here. I don't know. I liked the water. I liked the ship. We're kind of far away where we need to be, though. Basically, uh, we're a, a summoner. The last of a clan of summoners, people who can summon, uh, you know, ethereal beings to do their bidding. We've got a couple of teammates here. Let's check on the left. 
She's got a, a staff. She's kind of a magician. And then the girl in the back there is a little more of a bit of a thief. And she's got a bow and arrow. I'm not even sure if we're going to get into a fight today, guys. Because basically, I set us up in a situation where we may just... I might not even know what to do next. Hey, I put, put on my headphones. Let me put them on. Okay. All right. I'm gonna put these headphones on here. Oh, listen to that music, huh? All right. Now the the monastery is up on a cliff. So high up, there's an elevator there. Most of the monks here. This is an interesting RPG in that it does more than just uh, you talk, uh, what the, the NPC says, but in the green there, it adds in a little narrative, which I think is cool. Uh, I fought a warrior of ice and a sorcerer with the head of a ram. The monk murmurs as if in a trance. I have watched the birds in the full circle, their aria high in the cliffs of, whoa, we're not even trying that one. All right. So yeah, these uh, these monks are basically uh, I don't know cult members. You really can't do much with them. There's a couple of uh, couple of cottages here, and I believe this guy's a merchant. Look, it's an RPG. Let's do a little shopping. What do we got here? We got a bow. It's a pretty good looking bow actually. Quarter staff. Home of Revive, I mean, you know, your basic uh, stuff. I think it, I think the books, if you buy a book and it's maybe like you can use it three times as opposed to actually knowing the spell. You know, all these, lot, lots of ice coffin. Sounds interesting. So yeah, a lot, lot of uh, different items in this game. You could really get lost in this, definitely. But what we're doing today is uh, we're on our way to try and find a ring. The summoners apparently use rings as kind of a way to uh, channel different summons. So I think if we get a new ring, we'll get a new summon. Have I shown you my summon yet? No, because we're not in a fight. I'm not just going to throw out a bunch of, you know, stuff on you. Okay? Uh, this guy's like a golem. I guess he's going to... Give us a ride upstairs. Hailwalker. Do you wish to ascend? Yep. Let's go. It shall be my pleasure to serve you. Please. Enter the elevator. Probably overselling it, huh? I mean, that guy's there every day. He probably isn't that excited about putting people on the, on the elevator. So this is the monastery. Uh, basically, what has happened is we have tracked down the ring to a crypt called the Crypt of Kings. We've uh, kind of, you know, schmoozed our way around here. And since we are the last remaining summoner, we've got a little pull. So the abbot of this joint gave us uh, the go-ahead to go down into this Crypt of Kings that's been locked away from, from most people. Lost my way in. Oh, it's over here. This architecture is pretty cool. I'm gonna go through here. Now, up these stairs here is the Grand Library. Oh no, up to even more stairs, I think. Yeah, through that. Right through here and up those big stairs, the Grand Library where no one but the monks have ever been in, and they're not letting us in. So who knows? Right? We may never know. We're heading into the minor library where we were given a key to a bookcase. So one of these bookcases has to open up here. And before we go, we're going to talk to these people second and get some some info 
as to how to actually get into the Crypt of the, the Kings, because what I've heard is not only do we need the key to get in, but then we get it once we get into the first chamber, there's a puzzle we have to solve. And I'm serious, I don't know the puzzle. So I don't know if we're going to be stuck here for the next however long. But I did shake this guy down earlier. Where'd he go? Here. And he sounded like he hit some important info, so let's talk to him real quick. The old monk sighs, exhausted from long hours of studying the divine word. What you desire most in the world is which would destroy you. The pursuit of wisdom is the pursuit of folly. That's not what I need. Somebody here had like a really important line that I think we're going to need for this puzzle. Let's go talk to this guy. If you desire a way into the catacombs, speak to the two wise kings. Ask King Aikus for strength and seek knowledge from King Gavin. Farewell. Alright, Aikus for strength, knowledge for Gavin. I almost feel like I should write that down, but I have no way to. Here we go. So I did walk in here earlier. That's why the, the bookcase is open. All right, so look. So it looks like we're gonna be able to move the sarcophagus and it'll lead down to the Crypt of Kings. But as you can see, there are a whole bunch of statues here. Now, it was King Aikus for strength and King Gavin for knowledge. Now, that guy by the door there is reading a book. So that may be King Gavin. That guy's got no head. I don't know who King Icons would be. You know what would be great? First person mode. I don't think this game has that though. No. Alright, let's try this one here. Okay, all right, so, all right, so why don't we pull out King Gavin, and then we'll make sure everyone else is pushed in. See how we may be stuck here? <laughs> You're like, hey, why didn't you set us up with some combat? Guys, it's an RPG. If you haven't seen someone in an RPG, you know, fighting in an RPG by now, you've been under a rock. You're not missing anything with the combat. But what it, what an amazing situation it would be if we could actually pull off this uh, this puzzle before time runs out. Man, I sure wish I had, like, a better way to look at these guys. Who would be King Ranos? He would have a sword, right? Alright, well, we're going to come back to this. Okay. If Olger were here, I bet he'd know. I bet he would.
Get to the deals. There's no deals today. I mean, I guess they kind of are, but not really. One thing about Stare Ogre, uh, we discussed how he streamed, you know, what what he liked about this medium. Um, but another thing we didn't, we, what we haven't touched on is how brilliant he was when it came to hardware. He was like a master modder. He could repair anything you threw at him. I know some guy sent him a, 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 a Jaguar. I don't know if he, he fixed that, but it was, it was amazing because people in the community, it was like his name was everywhere. Everyone knew that there was some guy who just, just all he did was fix video game systems. People would send it to him. He would show uh, the tests live to see if they were working. I remember uh, he was showing a 3DO that he fixed. I don't know if we ever got that thing actually working. But man, how, I mean, how often are you going to see that? You know, this isn't just some guy who was running through ROMs. He spent hours of painstaking work opening up these, these relics and fixing them. Now, Ogre and I, I think we did one trade games-wise once. And he sent some really awesome stuff to the show. But I don't think I ever sent him any hardware. But I was planning to. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at the box of stuff that I never got to. Him. I don't know what's in here. I popped stuff in here more than a year ago. Uh, I, th I know at least one or two things. And I don't expect it to be too much. You'll notice it says, send to Ogre. Let's see if we got it. If uh, I can remember where we got these things, probably will. Uh, for me, it's all about the hunt, so. I'll try and remember prices, I'll try and remember what we did, and I'll try and remember why they're broken. But get ready for a bunch of stuff that just doesn't work. And as far as I'm concerned, if we're going to do a show on Ogre, this is exactly the kind of stuff he'd like to see. Okay? Let's check it out. Something small. Looks like it's a Game Boy. Oh yeah, I remember this Game Boy. Brought to us by Nicole Miller. Yeah, yeah, we got this. Uh, we got this guy with, uh, I think, nine games and a Craigslist deal. And uh, man, I don't remember what's what's wrong with it. I don't know if it even powers up. I think. Uh, man, I couldn't even tell you. And she wrote her name all over this thing. And then she sold it to us. I think we got it for 20 bucks. Who knows? I don't remember what's wrong with it, though. An old brick Game Boy, though. Okay. Oh, here we go. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah, I remember this one. So Retron 5. We owe many, many shows to this thing. It's a, basically an HDMI out for about 13 different classic consoles. We've, we've had one hooked up to the navigator since day one. Uh, this is not ours. Ours is still running after five years. Good as new. Uh, but we happen to find this one in a pawn shop. They were asking 40, I believe. And even at that price, that was a pretty decent deal. Uh, but it didn't have anything. No quartz. Nothing. And I said, does it work? And some chick who I'd never seen work there before 
a typical person who I think just gets into the industry because they're just bopping around from job to job and then soon bops their way out because I haven't seen her since. She sold this for me to me. I, I talked her down to 25 as is. And uh, I thought that was going to be a screaming deal until we got it home and it didn't work. Didn't work. And uh, I tried to bring it back. They wouldn't take it. She just went up and down about how it was as is. We got taken pretty big time on this one. And we were hoping Ogre was going to be able to pull us out of it. My plan was, I think I was just going to like let him have this one. I was like, here. And the Game Boy, too. I don't think I was too invested with the Game Boy. We have enough of those floating around. Because people would send him stuff to get it fixed. Or they would have them, have him, uh, you know, make, make them souped up video game systems. Oh boy, there we go. This guy I've had for a long time. You ever see a blue Game Gear? What? Uh, this is the only time I've ever seen one. It was at a Goodwill. And it's missing the batteries. Missing that. Uh, this was the uh, a limited edition Sonic the Hedgehog Game Gear, I believe. I think there may have been one other Game Gear, maybe red or something. I think other than that, they're all black. Don't quote me. Now I've got things in my head, like a yellow one. For, I don't know. And I remember it had Taz versus, I don't know, Invaders from Mars or something. Some absolutely forgettable Tasmania 2D platformer with Game, game Gear. And this was sitting on the shelf at a, game, at a Goodwill. Pretty exciting. I believe we spent six dollars on it, but uh, unfortunately, she just doesn't run. I think she's got audio. But that's it. Maybe not even that. I'm not even sure she runs. All right. Well. <laughs> oh. You guys ever hear of, uh, do you guys know who Steve Jackson is? Steve Jackson's a really prolific game designer. He, uh, if you have a board game designer. And uh, he's probably most known for, at least for me, uh, the Munchkin series of games. There's like a million different types of Munchkin board games out there. I, I don't have one around here at the moment. So I can't show you, but walk into any board game store, you're going to see the Munchkins. And uh, I don't know where we found this. I think a thrift store. But here's a sealed copy of Ogre. Ogre Pocket Edition by Steve Jackson. How about that? It says here... Steve Jackson's first game at the same price as it was all the way back in 1977. I don't know what, oh yeah, here it is. 299, 295. Looks like we found it at, at uh, Salvation Army for two bucks. Way to mark it down, Salvation Army. Uh, this is a recreation of the first edition of Ogre with the original cover map. Counter designs the same. The challenge is the same. Can you stop the ogre? How about that? I guess I just saw this and I, I thought of him. Hmm. It looks awesome. Look at that. Look at that, that art there. It's pretty cool. Okay. This may be it. Nope, nope, what's this? What's this? Oh, okay. We got, oh yeah, oh yeah, I remember this DS. Oh yeah. Got a, look, a screaming price of $20. I'm pretty sure we walked, we talked her down to five on this. Uh, the reason was it had been sitting there for a long time. 
this is uh man yeah this was a super duper mark our voyage is super duper mark fallout fallout 3 we got this along with a, a, a killer game boy pack found one of the rarest game boy games we'd ever found live along with this we talked her down to five dollars because it was it was booting up to the to for lack of a better term like the dos screen it looked like this whole thing had to be like wiped and reinstalled um, I was hoping at the time I was banking on maybe it just needed to the battery needed to be pulled out there was a battery case on here we pulled the battery case off it live pop the battery back in and we were still getting I wonder if this thing still powers up yeah it's been too long but yeah it was it was just coming up to the, to some some uh, default uh, debug screen, and I was like, maybe Ogre can handle it. Maybe Ogre can handle it. Maybe, maybe. What's this? Oh yeah, here we go. Ooh, Sega Master System. A Sega Master System that has never, ever started up for us. Luckily, we didn't spend anything on it. Uh, I believe it was a situation where we had bought... Ah, it's just weird. Some guy... We, we happened to be in a game store. He was selling off a bunch of stuff. They tried to, to boot this thing up. It didn't work. It actually had the box with it. A completely wrecked box, but box nonetheless. Uh, he didn't want anything to do with it. The store obviously wasn't going to take it because it was broken. They offered it up to us. We took it for free. We had no idea what was going to be wrong with it at the time. And to this day, we still don't. You know who would, though? I bet Ogre would. I think this is the one thing that I had said at the time. If you get this fixed, I'd like this back. Everything else I don't really... Um, the, the blue game gear would have been cool, but I think I could have been done without that. Oh, wait. One more thing. Yeah, here it is. I would like to have this back, too. No? Is this... Oh, there's, there's two things? No. Okay. Here's the last thing. I remember finding this is one of the first things I found when I moved to Indianapolis. There was this thrift store mom and pop. As mom and pop as they come, literally, a mom was running the joint. And her dad was in the back. And he was, like, tinkering with whatever they, they came across. He had this whole workshop just filled with stuff. And I happened to f figure out that he had a bunch of hardware back there. Just, like, Tupperware full of, like, you know, PS2 and Xbox 360 kind of stuff at the time. And I was like, you mind if I just dig around in here and see what you got? And he's like, yeah, come on back. This, this is the kind of guy who in 2017 is still smoking in his 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 shop, you know? It's my back room. Who's going to who's gonna tell me not to smoke? You know, this guy was in his 50s or something. And I'm looking at this, this whole place is just a mala. She's sitting at this desk and up just like a foot away from his head. Who knows how long it had been sitting there right by the door of the sticker shop. This little back room. I walk in. One of the first things I see just to my left on the shelf the 20th anniversary Famicom edition. Game Boy Micro. How about that, huh? Now he didn't know what he had. Maybe you don't know what he had. This is, this is, uh, this is a, this is the creme de la creme when it comes to handhelds, Game Boy Advance wise. I mean, the screen's small, sure, but it's really nice. It's a really nice screen. And boy, is it fun to just put in your pocket. It's, you know, it's is this aluminum? Maybe tin? That's pretty classy. And uh, I know you're like, well, what's all with, with all the scratches? You can actually pop this uh, this top off and replace it. That was one of the, the it was, 
you know, it was the late 90s. Everybody was trying to customize. They're still doing it. How everyone's trying to customize their phone. You can actually customize your Game Boy Micro back then. So we can pop the, uh, the, the top off of this thing. I don't know how easy it will be to do that. There you go. It comes right off. And look, that screen's cherry. But, uh, and these are really hard to find, and the 20th anniversary ones are even more expensive. So, this was quite the collector's find that uh, unfortunately never turned on. Who knows what's wrong with it? I bet I know who knows. I bet I know. Well, there you go. That's a whole bunch of broken stuff. Stuff you sure wish worked. What are we going to do with it now? Well, Ogre's not that sneaky. I still have his address. We may just send it. How's that sound? Let's get back to Summoner. It's Summoner for the PS2. We're stuck in this crypt. Uh, I mean, how much time's left in the voyage? 20 minutes? 22 minutes, maybe? So we'll send, uh, we'll, we'll try and get out of this crypt. We'll try and find our way at least to access this crypt. And if we can't do that, we'll wrap the voyage. All right, we'll come back and we'll see what's in the bag that tells no tales. Okay, let's get back with it. Summoner for the PS2. Oh, I don't want that. Sorry. There we go. Hey, where'd you go? Oh, there you are. Okay. Um, headphones? Wow, sorry guys. Jeez, get your head together. And controller. Okay, here we go. Alright, so, which one of these guys has a weapon? It's got to be strength, right? This guy kind of looks like he has a weapon. Let's pull him out. That's funny. I, I can... The wind... If I have headphones on so I can hear the wind. And the wind... It's the same stock wind that you hear whenever there's a sandstorm in uh, Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. Dude, there's no way. Open up. It's locked. I like his voice. <laughs> It's locked. <sighs> Not seeing any clues or anything. Oh, wait. Uh, well, no. I know, I'm noticing now that the floor is has got north, south, east, and west pointers like a compass. I don't know if that's going to help us, though. Hmm. It's locked. It's locked. Oh, okay, okay, that guy's got an axe. You see it? Oh, yeah, he's got a big honking axe. See that? What is that, 12 o'clock? That's definitely an axe in his hand. Alright, so let's push back this dude. So if he's got an axe, and this other guy's got a book, this is King Gakin. 
So this will be King Ancus. Is that what his name is? Ancus? Alright, so. Man, I wish I knew that all these were pushed in. It's pretty. Did this guy's head fall off? It did. Interesting. Okay. Let's try the guy with the axe. Is everyone push, pushed away? I hope. It's very hard to see if everyone's pushed in. Okay. I guess for strength. Gake him for knowledge. Okay. It did it! Look at that! Wow! Wow, we figured it out. How about that? I can't believe it. How much time we got left? We got about seven minutes or so. Let's let's go down here and kick some butt. Hey, you guys can actually see what the game actually plays like. Whoa. So this is it. This is the Crypt of Kings. And uh, I'll tell you what. If you couldn't afford to play World of Warcraft 10 years ago, this was the game to have. Wow, I can't believe we figured that out. I thought we were going to be skunks. I really did. Yeah, there's our buddy. So this is the only summon we have. Is that a two-headed skeleton? I believe it is. So you 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 can lock onto the guys, and then from there it's auto... auto uh, auto attack but you can also stop the action at any time cast spells now i built my guy like a healer uh the chick underneath me she's got a bow and arrow the chick underneath her uh, is going to be using lightning and then we've got our elemental beaten down so let's do it Now, one interesting thing about the combat here is you'll you'll notice that a little uh, we're inside the bones of a three-headed serpent. Really fascinating. It's a big serpent. Uh, you'll notice there's like a little like what looks like uh, an infinity symbol. That keeps coming up over my character's head when he's in a, a fight. Dagger. Pick up a dagger. Uh, that's not. It's actually an icon for what's supposed to be a chain. So when you when this guy he starts swinging on his own, but then if the chain comes up and you happen to hit one of the four uh, D pads up, down, left, or right on the directional pad, he will do a, a special blow. Maybe a blow that'll draw that'll draw stamina from the guy. Or maybe a, a critical bonus. Oh my! Now my my summons really beat up, so we're gonna have to heal him now. So let's heal him. Okay. I've got. Oh my gosh! I didn't actually do that, did I? I did. Oh, I'm an idiot. I banished my summon like a moron. And now I'm about to die. I did not mean to do that. So yeah, you can inevitably, in, in theory, continue to do that chain over and over and over and stack on statuses. So it's in that regard, it's got a bit of a, a rhythm element to it, maybe akin to, say, the Paper Mario series. So that's pretty neat. Alright, let's get our... Do I have enough power to get the summon back out here? No. We're going to have to recover that... That... A little bit here. Oh boy, this could be, get bad. That's right, fry him. Fry him, please. Joseph learned to chain silence. Ooh. 
Now that was learned uh, just by doing, I think, these chains as, as much as I can. The more you uh, do a certain skill, the better you get at it. That kind of thing. Let's uh, heal our magician, Rosalind. Okay. And I'm going to heal myself. And uh, the way s spells work is the the more points you put into uh, any number of skills, anything from just heavy weapon training to appraising to healing, uh, the more spells you'll learn in that school. I'll show you a little bit more what I'm talking about here under skills here. Uh, every you know so often you get you get points to put in here so I've you'll notice that my heal is all the way up to nine I have put a lot into that whereas my summon is way down I think if s speed at which summons gain power I don't know if I if I had if I put more points into that if I'd be able to summon something else other than my shadow guy but I don't think so I think that I think that's something you have to more you have to earn by getting the rings. I think it's a big deal to get a new summon. You know who'd really know? Ogre. I run that dry yet? Let's take a look from her perspective. So she's just firing. And you can you can be all of them. I usually just stick with Joseph since he's got the chain ability, and he and he's the healer. You know, I always have to be the healer. Let's heal Rosalind. Kill him. Got him. Do vital vitalize. Heals the whole party. And if we can, let's heal. Rosalind. You always gotta remember to pick up the loot in this game. It does not auto loot for you. Pick up 95 gold, you don't want to leave that behind. So you just gotta loot the bodies. Come here, you. This is unexplored territory for me, so if you're expecting some climactic, we're going to run into a boss here. Quilted robe? That's not going to happen. Where's, where's the stuff? Oh, quilted robe. Armor. Get back there. Info. Oh, it's for the chick. It's for Rosalind. Okay. This robe bestows some protection upon the wearer's torso. Alright, well, let's throw it on her. By all means. She doesn't have anything already, so she certainly needs it. That's cool. Look at that. You can actually see it go on her. Always a nice touch. Always a nice touch. Let's take a look at her now. Take a look at her now. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Always nice to see the, the equipment actually go on to the character. Alright. I don't know who this guy is. This is a whole bunch of cr crackheads here. Let's finish these guys off. And then we'll come back to wrap up the voyage, okay? Alright, let's do it. You know what? We're going to cast Bless on the elemental. 
protection spell. Get him! Is he dead? Wow, I think we just fried that guy big time. I don't like that guy off in the distance on the black robe. I don't know what he's up to. This music is is very like I don't know, like any any B B grade fantasy movie. Like Krull or something. Alright, Bone Mage, let's get him. Yeah, where's your buddies? Oh, we rocked him. Wow. This is pretty fun, but we gotta go. Alright, one more guy. Come on. I see you wanna play. Let's go. Wow. It's locked. This girl can lock, pick locks, but she's like level one. Oh, she's not good enough to open it. Wow. It's locked. All right, we gotta go. I'm gonna go. It sucks. Can I just, just one more? It's so easy to kill him. It's just addictive. Oh yeah, man! Look at all that XP. Alright, we'll see. We'll leave it there. We gotta leave it there. I want to keep playing. We don't have that kind of time. Alright. We'll have to leave Joseph and, uh, I don't know, whoever else is involved here. Rosalind. The girl in the cape. Alright. Summoner for the PS2 is an expensive game. No. No, in fact, I saw it for $4 last week. It's huge, though. I'll tell you that much. The 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 capital city alone, I mean, there's like, you got the you got the pier district. Then you got the, the market district. Oh, you got the outskirts. Then you got the market district. Then you got the, the old city. Then you got the crown district. Then you got the, pa the palace. Huge. Huge game. A lot of fun. And we would have never known anything about it. We're not for old ogre. Alright, well. I did a little research on uh, what they would say for burial at sea. And uh, I realized it was really, really Christian y. So uh, I decided to pull the what they informed me was the Hollywood version. So we're going to play that. We're going to read this out for uh, to say goodbye to Ogre's channel. Okay? And so we commend our shipmate, Ogre, and we commit his body and channel to the depths. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. May the sea bless him and keep him. May the sea make his face to shine upon him and be gracious unto him. May the sea lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace. If you didn't figure it out, I swapped out Jesus Christ's name for the sea. Okay? What's in here? First of all, we gotta show this before we leave. Ogre made us this. We've seen this on the show before. And when I opened this live, I don't think I've ever been more shocked in all the shows I've ever done. But this right here shows you the kind of guy, this, how special of a guy Ogre is. Okay? When's the last time anybody gave you something like this? 
I was like, oh wow, this is awesome. I can keep Game Boy games in there. Check it out. For all your hard work you put into every board. Over. We threw Mario RPG in there because we knew we didn't. He knew we didn't have it. And uh, it's been about two years. So I think this thing's run out of batteries. But if it's got the charge, when you open it, it says, It's me, Mario. Brilliant, huh? All right, before we leave, uh, we don't have a letter. We don't have a question. I didn't think it was appropriate for this uh, goodbye show. We do have here, though, is uh, Ogre's final parting words to me. I think he, I think had I, had I let him go without tracking him down, had Popo not told me to find him before he disappeared forever, I probably wouldn't have got th even this out of him. I tried to beg him, what's going on? Is there anything I can do? Gotta get further this gameplay audio, we're getting killed. <laughs> Joseph's dying during my my touching moment. I said to him, is there anything I can do? He says, Captain, it's just something I gotta do. And he left me with this. He left us with this. It's the last thing I ever heard from him. Mountains never meet, but man, may once again. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I want to do the fair Spanish maiden. I want to do ye ladies of Spain. For we received orders for to say farewell to a girl. And no, never more shall we see ye again. Take care of yourself, buddy. Good night, everyone.